when Nikola Tesla was in his late 80s, very old, and he was given a big awards dinner in New York where the world was thanking him for all the incredible things that he had given to the world. And he said, Nikola Tesla spoke to the audience, and he said, I have to tell you how I got my ideas to do what I've done. He said, every evening before bed, Your brain as a human has nothing to do with your creativity, with your ideas and your understanding of things. The brain is designed to do only one thing and one thing only. It is to control the mechanisms of your body. It controls the electrical impulses that go to your your muscles so that you can walk, so you can run, so you can climb it controls your body's muscles. It controls the movement of the human body. It controls the blinking of the eye, the swallowing of water. It controls everything in your body. It's nothing more than a controlling mechanism for your human body. But when it comes to your imagination, your creativity, the ideas and concepts that come out of you We have, as scientists, no idea in the world where your spiritual perceptions come from, where your thoughts come from. We have no idea at all. All that we know is it has nothing to do with your brain. Your brain does not give you inspiration. It merely takes care of your body. And so, therefore, where do your thoughts come from? When the great composers were composing the beautiful music, where do those ideas for the, for the music come from? When you get people who are writing profoundly important books, where, and we say they were truly inspired, where well, we know it wasn't in their mind, it came from outside of their brain. So it implies that our inspiration is being we are being overshadowed is the term that i use overshadowed by some kind of a higher intelligence in the universe something out there is feeding us information and it's called inspiration we are being inspired and some people are just naturally pick up on inspiration from out there wherever it comes from And they can create beautiful music, beautiful art. They can design rockets. They can design lasers, <laughs> televisions, all kinds of strange and wonderful imaginations in the human mind. But it does not come from your brain. It comes from out there. And so when you listen to the composers of music, Uh, you can tell they were inspired. They didn't just read it out of a book. If you understand what they were doing, they're not just picking sounds that sound nice. No, it was mathematical. It was very deep understanding of the, of the creation of the universe, the breathing in and the breathing out of the universe. It had to do with an occult, heavy duty science of vibrations, rhythms, and how the, and, and they could change the whole concept of a nation by music. I mean, the Germans used the music from Wagner and, and it inspired, and America has music that inspires the nation because there is some kind of a mathematical science to it. There's a science to put music together. And of course, in Hollywood, you have what is called programmed music. In a movie, when something evil is going to happen, you get a certain kind of, of music. When something is going to be funny and silly and, and to be laughed at, you get that kind of music behind it. So it's programming you, your mind with music so that you are inspired to get the idea out of the movie. So inspiration is not part of what the brain does. Inspiration comes from outside the brain. I believe that our, the human family, the human people on the earth, 
Their brains are a computer where an incredible computer is alive. And that computer runs on wiring. And we're told that we, our blood vessels and our nerves are miles and miles of nerve endings in our body. That's the wiring for the computer to all the body, to control the body. The brain needs to be able to send messages out to certain nerves for you to do certain things. And so the brain is a computer, and I believe that what we call God is some kind of a, for a lack of a better term, some sort of a Wi-Fi unit. You can have a hundred different computers in a room, and they're all on a one Wi-Fi unit, which means all 100 computers can be doing 100 different things, tuning into different different places and doing different things and they're all getting it from one source from a wi-fi unit and so something is guiding our destiny something out there is guiding our thinking and if you've ever seen a flock of birds large large flocks of birds with thousands of birds and you see them all flying in one direction and it instantly in a in an absolute one second instant they all turn, all the birds turn and go a different way. And they all then flip back and turn and go a different way. How come all of the birds knew to turn at that very one second point and they all turned and went a different way together like the fish do? We call it schools of fish. And I've seen it where the fish are thousands of fish and they're all sailing along together and instantly, all of a sudden, they all go in a different direction. How is that possible? One incredible story about how the brain communicates with the heavens and the heavens communicate with you. And we know that the planets and the sun and the moon affect your brain. And the planets all have a resonant frequency. And each one of those planets, when you were born, affected your mind. When you were born, you came out of your mother into the world. And the sun has a profound electrical feel on the earth that is causing incredible stuff to happen. Our weather, the moon affects people. It affects the female. It affects her, uh, her periods once a month is caused by the moon the moon pulls the oceans of the world we know that the moon affects the oceans why because they're water and the moon affects water and this is why your body is like 76 percent water so how does the moon affect you at the full moon well it causes you to get silly and crazy sometimes really crazy so we call you a lunatic why because the moon is affecting your blood it's affecting your brain the vibrations in your mind are being affected by the sun the moon mars jupiter and so women are from venus and men are from mars meaning our minds operate differently because of the way we are born and, and who we are and the vibrations in the brain. It's a very big subject about inspiration. And, and the inspiration comes from out there. When Nikola Tesla was in his late 80s, very old man, he was given a big awards dinner in New York where the world was thanking him for all the incredible things that he had given to the world. And uh, and he said, Nikola Tesla spoke to the audience, and he said, I have to tell you how I got my ideas to do what I've done. He said, every evening before bed, I will put a, a, a notepad on the little table next to my bed with a pen or a pencil. And he said, and every morning when I wake up, there's a written invention on the pad. Somebody comes into my room at night and writes down an invention and, and the next morning I get up and it's all written out for me and so I just go to my laboratory and follow the instructions and I invented radio or I invented uh, alternating current or I made this invention or that invention and today Nikola Tesla has lit the world and given us radio and 
and all kinds of wonderful things this man gave to the world. But he said he was inspired by someone writing it down when he was sleeping. And so that's inspiration. To inspire comes from the word spire, to like perspire, inspire. And so spire is to breathe together. Breathing is spire. And so someone was breathing into him their ideas and coming from somewhere else. So that was one point I wanted to make about inspiration is it doesn't necessarily come from you. It comes from out there. 